Are we allowed to vote? Are we voting? <laughs> I'd love to hear from you, even if it doesn't count. Okay. <laughs> okay. Aye. Okay, thank you. So the closed session will be moved to the end. The first item on the agenda is the 2020-21 school board virtual budget public hearing. Okay, so we did something a little bit different. We're doing a lot of things differently. Thank you to everybody that's joining us um, via the virtual world we solicited um public comments ahead of time so what i have for you you had up until five o'clock today not that this ends the conversation but for this public uh work session so uh, i haven't had an opportunity to address all of these yet but i wanted you to see the comments that we have um, so we have those up on slides for you so i'll just briefly go through uh the first one's about the new positions that are being requested in the budget budget specifically those first three lines that includes the uh, student accountability specialist and the uh, public information officer. Uh, so what kind of su teaching support and planning positions are these and why are they needed? So we'll continue working through this staff staffing process and we'll talk about that when we come back in April 13th for the uh, budget update. So, uh, the next question, um, which is a great question. Um, will there be a new plan for anticipated teacher raises? How will the additional expenses from coronavirus impact? The contingency plan, um, has there been any talk preliminary graph guidance about grants and special funding? Um, so this is one that we work are working through every day, twice a week, Tuesdays and Thursdays, I have updates from the state superintendent's office. Um, we're working through this process now. We don't entirely know the complete impact of um, coronavirus, the impact of shutting down, um, and the impact that will have on teacher raises. Um, it's a good reminder that a good portion of our revenue is uh, based off sales tax, and we do anticipate some pretty significant hits to sales tax. So this is uh, to be determined, but we are working hand-in-hand -hand with the county and the state uh, to look at those needs. So will there be an impact? Yes. Uh, what is that impact? Uh, we worked on that for quite a bit today and we'll continue to work through it. The state right now gives us a calculation tool based on the education budget that was passed. They're still, as of today, telling us to use that calculation tool. So if that changes, that will certainly change the funding that we have uh, put forward. So more information to come. But this is a big question on everybody's mind and will be uh, the focus of the discussion in my meeting tomorrow as well. So, great question we're working through. Um, so the third one we have is around uh, bridging communities. Uh, there's one expenditure adjustment. And this is really about um, how many students attend these programs currently uh, and how are we gonna expand seats for future. Uh, right now we have about 65, 68 students that attend bridging. We are the largest user of bridging communities. The additional cost at 17,000 is really to add HVAC um, program back to bridging next year. So in that we will get a set number of seats. I want to say it's somewhere around eight, but I can confirm that piece. Um, we do plan to expand these programs. They may not entirely all be at bridging communities. but some of this will be expanded at our high school uh, for all of our kids to provide more access. Um, so once again, we'll get more information on that. So the fourth comment we have is um, about our early college academy, um, attending right hand community college. They pay out of pocket, um, nearly $50,000 for a week. And other New Kent students do not contribute to their college tuition through a county funded regional program. So we do have a number of regional programs, which is a great thing to have that offer kids opportunity to college credit. 
uh, but looking at the equity connected to that. So if you are attending a regional program, and I believe the program doesn't specifically talk about the Chesapeake Bay, um, that cost is offset through our tuition payment. Whereas if you're a student at McKinn High School, there is an out-of-pocket out uh, charge. So that's a, definitely a fair point and something we need to look at um, and explore with our regional partners. Um, we'll have some influence over Chesapeake Bay, but then um, we're working with Rappahannock Community College, and depending on how this budget goes, we're looking to reduce that $1,800 cost uh, or the tuition cost, whatever that may be, um, for a student to attend at Rappahannock Community College. So we're really trying to work a program where the cost is similar across all our programs, whether you're on campus or at the high school. So this one's definitely on our radar and something that we're working on uh, with Rappahannock. So the fifth, and I believe this is the last one. Um, so, and four members, I'll give you the, the full um, narrative on this. For the sake of the screen, we just, we put um, just a piece of this on there. Uh, and it really has to do with special education funding. Um, whereas, uh, there's an increase of 33,806 for regional program tuition, 15,000 of it is around gifted, and then there's a line item uh, for 85, 5,800 for special ed. Um, there are other places in the budget that have special ed funding, regional special education funding, uh, specific special education funding. So what we'll do is we'll compile that and show total special education funding. Um, so that's just one piece of the budget. Um, how many students are currently served through our special education department? Uh, we'll get you that specific number. I would hesitate to tell you the exact uh, number on that, but we can look at that in terms of uh, cost per student uh, connected to the budget and also percent increase. So those are the five big questions that we received. So we'll get all the questions and other comments. Uh, what we'll do, uh, specifically, we listen to comment here as we go back and we address it and reach back out with uh, answers. We'll provide you with uh, the comments and questions and also uh, the responses as well. Orders, any comments or questions now? Okay. Um, Andrew, you have a question now. Okay. Um, Andrea or Sarah, any questions? Uh, not at this time. Okay. None for me. I need to remember to unmute my phone. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Thank you. Um, the next item on the agenda is um, to look at the new elementary school. Okay, so we just wanted to provide a quick update um, to the board. Uh, tonight was the night that we were going to move forward on the new elementary school contract. So that was initially the agenda item. Uh, the county met um, last week and they pushed that bond funding back until another week or so. Uh, so we can't come before you on a new school contract, uh, but I wanted to let you know that we'll continue to work with the county on that month piece. We have a meeting Wednesday um, with uh, both uh, subsets of both governing bodies to work with. Uh, meanwhile, we're moving forward with other parts of the new school, uh, including redistricting. We kick off the redistricting meeting tomorrow. Uh, we have a great committee that's working on that. That was going to be an in-person meeting to kick off. Uh, the consultant was flying in. Um, another impact of uh, sort of where we are currently uh, in the country is he cannot come here, uh, nor can we convene that redistricting committee. So we're using virtual channels just like we are tonight, but we will start that redistricting process. So no matter uh, where we are in the new school, we still have to go through the redistricting. So that stays on track, even though uh, the new elementary school piece um, as it goes at this point. So very brief update, but if you want to ask any questions related to New Elementary School, uh, I'd be more than happy to. Hey, one of the questions on that, Brian, for the redistricting, I know we talked about it contractually. I guess one of the things, and I guess this is a, for Haney as well, that we probably have to look at whatever adjustments need to be made, because remember there was a big chunk there that was due for travel, lodging, all of that to make sure that that's the an addendum is set with that contract to to make sure that we don't get billed for that and it just 
gets paid since we've already approved that contract to, um, to proceed forward. <clears throat> So, so if I could uh, co uh, comment on that, as those are those are reimbursable expenses, and the way those are set up is there is essentially it's an allowance uh, set up. Any travel meals, uh, anything that's applied to that has to be supported by uh, receipt to show that the money was actually spent and only money that was actually spent for the project is paid to the consultant. So if they never submit re uh, receipts, then that money is never paid to them. So just to clarify, that's the way that should be done. Perfect. Good, thank you. I believe the first three sessions were gonna be in person, including the first public information session which we had scheduled for April. Um, so we won't be able to do that in that venue in April. So one of the things we'll talk about tomorrow is how do we proceed, still get the input we need across the community, but do it in this virtual context. If we can't do a public hearing and bring everybody together like we're going to do at the high school, uh, but we still have a, a obligation to make sure we're involved. In that. So that'll be a big part of what we talk about tomorrow and kind of brainstorm. Uh, but it's a great day. Uh, we have parents. Our staff, county staff, uh, a nice cross section of, of folks were excited for that to uh, kick off tomorrow. Any other comments or questions? This was a very short meeting. We are going to go into a particular session. Um, and at that time, we'll also look at personal matters. Um, before we end the meeting, I, I just think particularly because this is um, a new opportunity for us to be able to connect with people, um, to just communicate how much the school board members appreciate all of the hard work that administration has done, teachers, staff, um, we just, this county is absolutely tremendous and we really appreciate all that's been done at the school level. Uh, I think it's important that everybody know that we have frequently asked questions. Those are updated on a regular basis, um, and we encourage people to continue to look at that. And then also there may be some individual things that are going on at your school level, but we continue to look forward to supporting all of the hard work that everyone is doing. We are so very grateful, so thank you so much. Um, with that, we are going to, um, uh, I need to hear a motion. Um, Um, do I have a motion to go into closed session pursuant to section 2.2-3711A1 of the Code of Virginia for discussion and consideration of personnel matters? I move we go into closed session. I do I have a second? I'll second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. Okay. Okay. Aye. Thank you very much. Um,